Phil Mickelson sending out a statement yesterday um, that he's stepping away from the game for a while. And uh, what ended up um, preceding all of this was a quote in a book that is uh, um, coming out um, and an excerpt from the book that was put on the Fire Pit Collective, which is the current writing home for this man who's been writing about golf for quite some time. Um, he is the writer on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line, Alan Shipna, kind, of, kind enough to call in the Rich Eisen Show amidst, uh, I'm sure your phone's blowing up these days, sir. Uh, it's, it's been an eventful few days, but I don't have time for you, Rich. I, pre- I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Alan. So um, let's get right into this here. This is your, your, from your uh, unauthorized, right, biography of Phil Mickelson, the rip-roaring and unauthorized biography of golf's most colorful superstar, Phil. Um, what, what's the, uh, the uh, context of the quote and everything that's uh, going on, if you want to start with that? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not sure how much your, your listeners have been tuned into the Saudi Golf League, but this has been bubbling up for the better part of a year, and... Phil has been in the middle of all of it. Uh, you know, as he told me, he, he actually helped pay for the attorney that would write the operating agreement of the, of the SGL, uh, which was which was a bold move considering you know, the, the PG Tour has always been his home and has been a great platform for him to uh, build a fortune and, and reach the Hall of Fame. But, you know, Phil loves to stir the pot and he likes to be the smartest guy in the room. So, you know, he recognized that the Saudi golf league was kind of a once in a lifetime chance to have some leverage over the tour and, and try and force the tour to make some changes that would, that would benefit all the players, but especially him. And so he, uh, he was working both sides of the street and what, what Phil wanted, what was in his heart was really one of the big questions in golf. He told me all of that. And uh, it was all going in the book as the Saudi golf league was coming to a boil. It felt like, you know, my book's not coming out till May, and this was just too important to the discourse of, of what's really going on in the world of golf right now. So we dropped the excerpt uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, last week, and things have gone a little crazy since then. But, you know, I, to some degree, I'm surprised by the um, the blowback on Phil because it was pretty obvious all along what he was doing, which was which was trying to play the, the, the Saudis against the tour and and, and and see what kind of deal he could cut for himself. I mean, everybody who was paying attention knew that. But he, you know, he said the quiet parts out loud, and that was was so eye catching. And you know, raw, unvarnished truth is a it's a precious commodity in in, uh, in sports these days. And Phil just put it out there. So um, uh, the 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 blowback has been so much that he's taken a little time away to let things cool down and. and reassess and plot his next move but uh, it's definitely been an interesting chapter in in, in his career and, and certainly it's an interesting chapter in the book all right so then let's let's get into um uh, a little bit about what phil said and then some and then fill in maybe back phil about what this no pun intended about what 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 this beef with the pga tour is all about Alan Shipnuck, the the writer of the uh book phil uh from which this quote that uh that uh has led to the firestorm uh, right here on the Rich Eisen show. The quote in, in, in question, it appears from Phil's statement yesterday was he said off the record. Um, I'll give you the floor on that, Alan. Well, patently false and disappointing because I mean, Phil, Phil knew all this was for the book. He was, first of all, he you have to understand Phil's motivation is he, he wanted to go on record with his true feelings because then he was covered either way by, by calling the, the Saudis scary mofos and, and, and acknowledging some of the, their atrocities. That's his signal to golf fans. If, you know, if he wound up going over there and taking the money, at least he would have, he would have registered uh, the, some sort of a conscience and some sort of a understanding of global affairs and that this is just strictly a business decision, and he wanted people to know that. If he stayed with the PGA Tour, it might have looked like a defeat, but he wanted he wanted fans to know that he'd extracted all these concessions and that he was he was really working hard behind the scenes to get what he wanted because Phil just has this need to uh, be the loudest voice in the room and, and certainly the smartest one. That, that's just part of his personality. It makes him fun to be around, but it also gets him in trouble. But, you know, he initiated this conversation with me it is an unauthorized biography, and he had, 
I, three times I approached him face to face to to sit for interviews for the book, and he declined, which was his prerogative, and that was fine because I'd had so much access to Phil through the years, I didn't really need him. But um, as this, this Saudi stuff was heating up, and he realized it was going to really impact his legacy in the sport, he wanted to make his feelings known to me. He asked if, if we could speak. Uh, I said yes, of course. Even though he just said he only wanted to talk about about these issues, and I was there's other things I would have rather gotten into, but you know he was. He was kind of setting the ground rules, so I said, fine. And, you know, not once did, did he ask to go off the record, and I certainly never consented to that. And it's a two-way street, you know, and, um, when, when you're doing an interview. Uh, if he had asked, I certainly would have pushed back because this is my one chance to talk to him for the book. But he just, he just started talking. And, you know, I think Phil, in his mind, this wasn't going to come out until May when the book is released, and... Um, you know, at that point, everything would have been done and dusted, and he would have signed on the dotted line with the Saudis or not. Uh, but because events were moving so quickly, and I'd been hearing from people close to the Saudi Golf League, there's going to be an announcement the week of the Players' Championship, which is only a couple, you know, a couple weeks from now. It just seemed like we had to get this this stuff out into the world so golf fans could really understand Phil's motivation and and what was going on here. And, uh, so that that's the whole backstory. But the record the the, the quotes were certainly on the record. Phil knew that. I knew that. And for him to say otherwise is disappointing. So um, <laughs> I'm drinking all that in right now. So um, basically, because uh, it made no sense for him saying that it was off the record, but he's apologizing for it and stepping away for it, right? Because that, that means what? Off the record meant that he didn't want it out there. and right. But it's still something that he's now apologizing for and stepping away for like what is the stepping away for do you think what do you think that that means well, like, what, why do you think he's stepping being, away it, it could be a code word for being suspended by the pga tour for you know conduct unbecoming um i'm, I'm not sure the tour would want to go down that road because in some ways it would prove their phil's point that they're they're you know reactionary bad guys but uh you know Bill's been playing fast and loose for a long time. I mean, whether you're talking about um, the Billy Walters insider trading escapade, the 2018 U.S. Open where he hit a moving ball on the green at Shenkock Hills and ignited a firestorm and then tried to BS his way out of it, you know, throwing Tom Watson under the bus at the 2014 Ryder Cup. I mean, Phil loves to stir the pot, and I do think it's taken a toll. And there's a lot of stuff in his life that, the public doesn't know about and it's all in the book and he, there's a lot of stress in his life all of his own doing of course and so i think maybe he's just his nervous system is maxed out right now and and he does need to reset and do some reflection and some self-improvement so um i i, I take that at face value but there could be a, a pga you know one of those situations where the it was good, i'm going to jump before you push me as far as any kind of suspension um you know, the tour never speaks publicly about any disciplinary action, so we'll never know for sure. But uh, it's kind of analogous to Dustin Johnson back in 2016 when he took that, that six-month, you know, quote-unquote leave of absence to address, you know, personal challenges, as he called them. And, you know, was he suspended or did he did he take a leave of absence? It was basically the same thing. But, you know, Dustin came back from that a much better player and person. And I wish the same thing for Phil Mickelson. I mean, yeah. In, in the wake of all this, I've had people say, oh, is, is this book, are you trying to take down Phil? Is this, is this a hit job? And it, It's not like that. I mean, the book is written with a certain amount of affection. I've always enjoyed covering Phil. And there's a lot of laugh out, out loud moments in the book. There's a lot of outrageous stories. Yeah, everyone has. Everyone has. And that's why part of this yeah. is kind of like, you know, oh, damn it. So he's not going to follow up what he did at the PGA Championship with the Masters? Like, uh, right? I mean... We were just oh, remarking back to the Masters. I, I don't think this is gonna. This is not gonna stretch on for months and months. And, you think he'll be back um, for the Masters then, huh? You I think, think he'll be back to the Masters. That's his favorite place. It, it, you know, it's it's a, it's an artificial reality. He can he can call the shots on whether he wants to do right. a press conference or not, and control the whole scene just like Tiger did when he came back from his sex scandal. So I would be amazed if Phil's not back at the Masters. Um, and honestly, I think he'll emerge from this more popular than ever. We, we know sports fans love a redemption story and they love a comeback. And a, a slightly more humble, less cartoonish Phil Mickelson, I think people will embrace. And, you know, he's kind of turned into a cartoon character in recent 
years with you know all the preening about his calf muscles and hitting these bombs off the tee and the hair dye that that you know he's like Rudy Giuliani is gonna start leaking down his forehead one of these days and all this stuff and I think that you know there's a lot to like about Phil he's an incredible philanthropist he's he does many random acts of kindness uh and he's a smart guy he's probably not quite as smart as he thinks but he's a smart thoughtful person and so I I think that you know, this time of reflection will serve him well. And, you know, people are saying, oh, this is going to destroy his legacy. I mean, they have, that's a very short memory. Phil's been in, in, engulfed in controversies off and on his entire career. And he remains wildly popular. I mean, it's almost part of his brand. And even though he set himself on fire with the Saudi Golf League, I mean, the fact is it, it kind of it, it's on brand. You know, he, he, he's a self-styled maverick. He was trying to reshape some of the terms of professional golf. And, you know, was, was he dri- driven by money? You know, obviously. But... I do think part of him thought it was for the greater good, and um, you know, he, if you if you if you pay attention to the granular details, a lot of what he wanted, he's already accomplished. I mean, because of the Saudi threat, the PJ Tour is pumping 100 million dollars this year back to the players, more than did last year with increased purses and bonuses and the player impact program and all these things. And you know, Phil has to get credit for some of that, and they've created this NFT platform, which. Probably would have happened eventually, but it happened really fast because Phil was pushing hard for that. So, uh, and there's some other things that that still you know may come of all his behind the scenes advocacy. So, even the players who have had some unkind things to say about him, if they're paying attention, um, they're not that mad at Phil. I mean, he's making them even richer than they already were. So, um, you know, Phil's going to survive this. He's a survivor. He, he's been through so many kerfuffles. This is just the latest one, and. You know, the the whiff of the Saudi taint is a little different. I mean, it, I don't think he uh, he quite understood. It's still an emotional topic for a lot of people, given that they supplied 15 of the 19 9-11 hijackers and uh, obviously the recent, you know, killing of the Jamal Khashoggi. I mean, for, for Phil, I think he thought he was just being a shrewd businessman, and he didn't quite get that th- this, is, this is different. If it would... If if this golf league was was supplied by you know European interests, people would not have had the same reaction. But Saudi Arabia is still very toxic and emotional for a lot of folks, and I don't think Phil understood that. Alan Shipnuck, I appreciate the time here. Um, uh, so the book comes out in May, and you put the excerpt out now because it was newsworthy. Can you can you tell people in the Washington Beltway how it's done? Can you do that? Because <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, do you, do you have friends in the Washington Beltway who who sit on st- who write books and sit on stuff for a year and then it comes out and it would have been nice to know when it was actually timely and newsworthy, just like you just did. Yeah, I and mean, that was part of my motivation is I didn't want to go down that road. I mean, because the Saudi thing was was really about to happen and it may still happen, but I just felt like it's time for for everyone to put their cards on the table and. You know, Simon Schuster was not super stoked. I mean, as you as you know, uh, they generally you know, publishers want you know the, the excerpts and the juicy stuff to come out right around publication. But right. I just felt, you know, ultimately my job is is as a truth teller, and I'm not on the side of the PJ Tour or for Mil- Phil Mickelson or the Saudi Golf League. You know, I don't have a dog in the fight other than I just want people to be informed and they can make their own decisions. And this was just too relevant to sit on it. But uh, you can pre-order the book now. Yes, you very good. Drop. <laughs> exactly. Please do that. No, I, obviously, the, I'm sure there's other stuff uh, in, in there of, of interest. And, and as you point out, Phil is one of the most fascinating sports figures that America has put on an international stage um, of, of our time, of his time. And, um, and it's definitely uh, worthy for everyone to go get. So you think the Saudi League is still alive? Like this is possible, even though you've seen the reaction of people like Rory McIlroy and others on the international stage like him um, and that Phil's, Phil's not going to be part of it, clearly? Um, or do you think he well, could he be? Hasn't, he hasn't, Phil has not quite renounced the, um, right. the Saudis. And if you read his, his, his statement, which is a bit of a word salad, um, you know, he had a lot. He, there was a, he was trying to mend fences with them. So I, I wouldn't say Phil's out completely yet. I mean, all the Saudis have to do is add an extra zero to everybody's offer, and this thing could come back from the dead, and they have the ability to do that. So yes. um, we'll see. I mean, it's been mortally wounded as, as a concept, but it's not dead. And, and yeah, is, I think it, Phil, it, is it true? I think is, Phil, it, I'm sorry. Is it true that, that Trump is the one who would be housing uh, or holding these tournaments? Is that the what you're hearing? Like, where well, would the tournaments so it's, be? It's, it's, 
a, it's proposed to be a 13 tournament uh, schedule. Nine would be the U.S. Yep. and three Trump courses were in the mix. So yeah, I mean it's a perfect marriage, right? Um, you wouldn't be hosting all of them, but that would be a significant number. And you know, Jared Kushner was over at the Saudi International Golf Tournament a few weeks ago that Phil played in a lot of other guys, and there's a lot of behind the scenes deal making. So yeah, there's no doubt that the Trump courses are in the mix, but. Uh, I think Phil's best move is to his next statement would be, you know, I thought about it, and even though the money was tempting, my heart's with the PJ Tour, which has been such a wonderful platform for me, and I'll quietly work to make it better. But you know, I think if and when he renounces the Saudi Golf League, that, that will be helpful to him. But they're not easily deterred. I mean, I, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I think losing Dustin Johnson and, and Bryson DeChambeau, who ran to the hills as soon as Phil's um, quotes came out. I mean, that hurt because they were two of the biggest names that had been attached to it. But I'm not sure the Saudis really care about world ranking points. They just want to have tournaments, and they'll get the best players they can get. And um, the insidious thing about sports washing is that it works because by if they launch this thing by year two, there'll be less resistance, and you know more players may sign up. And you know I think they're just they're playing the long game. So. I, it, I don't know who's excited with Saudi Golf League, but I'm not ready pr- to pronounce it dead just yet. Alan, thanks for the time. Um, look forward to seeing the entire book um, and l- come back in May when when uh, when you're promoting it, and we'll have you on and uh, make sure everything's copacetic with your your publisher. Because you know, I'm <laughs> I, I'm no, I'm serious, yeah. man. I mean, what you did, um, I, I'm sure there were some people in in Simon and Schuster saying, "What do you mean?" we're going to do this now. Yeah, well, so. no, I appreciate that. And I will say there's, there's, there's so much else in this book that people are, are going to enjoy and there's, there's more revelations coming. I mean, we'll okay. be talking about this for a while, so I'll take up on that offer, but thank Let's you. Let's do it. Thanks for the call now. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye. Alan Shipnuck right here from the fire pit collective and also his book. Um, if we can put it up on the screen one more time called Phil. And I think the photograph is from him from the, his most recent major win standing there. Or just him with his sun just shades on. That was that was the shot at the That's PGA it. last year. Oh man, the rip roaring and unauthorized biography of golf's most colorful superstar. And, and that's why I'm sure people are going to be very confused. It's unauthorized. So why did Phil speak to him for an unauthorized biography that he said three different times? I'm the, I don't want to talk to you. And then he's like, I'll talk to you specifically about this. Right. According to Allen, and then Allen's sure he could have knocked him over with a feather when he saw in the statement yesterday that. His comments were taken off the record. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.